Hello fellow tinkerers, welcome to tutorial 3 of the multi-material single mesh series. We are going to cover setting up the character blueprint to receive input from our color picker widget. So I've just copied over the template third person character and I renamed it Multimat. So you'll see it's just the stock template, I haven't changed anything yet. What we're going to do is you first want to make sure you select your mesh, otherwise it'll just drop it in above and be all weird about it. I'm going to grab the character we've been working on, drag it in, and with the mesh highlighted, drop it on, and it will make the correct orientation for you. Uh, chances are if you've come across my video, you have definitely seen TC Mabe. I'll link in the description below. Uh, a link for his video about retargeting animations and I've just followed that so I created it and followed it there you go we've got our character set up I am now going to head over to the event graph what we want to do is create our widget on event begin play so we're just going to create widget and then you'll select the widget all right so this is what we've been working on and i'm going to select the dynamic widget that we've been creating what i'm going to do now is promote this to a variable just so we can reference back to it later and i'm going to call this WDG color picker and the first thing we're going to do is set the visibility because we don't want it on straight away um, how I'm setting this all up is probably not how you're going to do it in game I'm really just demonstrating how to apply it in its most basic form so now I'm just going to create a boolean variable it'll be is color picker viz I'm going to compile that we are going to set it and we'll just make sure it's zero i mean it all you can compile it and have it set to not visible but i'm just going to do this to be safe we now want to add our widget to viewport reference our Cinti character mesh that we dropped in before We want to get material slot names and we are going to now do a for each loop create a dynamic material we can promote this to a variable i'm going to call this mat list compile save and I'm going to set it to be an array. Yep, I want to change the type. And I just did that because I could just make a new variable mat list, but it's it's just going to have it there for me. So I'm just going to get it. And what we want to do now is just add add array. And there you have it, we've got our material list and we have created our widget and set it as invisible. Hidden now. Okay, so now this is hidden. I just got to it before. And is color pick of is is set to false. So now we're just gonna access the event tick. And what I wanna do is we're just gonna get this here. Go branch, and this is just so when our widget is not visible, the next part of the code is not just going to execute every tick. So next, we are going to reference to our color picker widget. We are going to drag out of that. We're going to look for our part name. And if you remember, it's what we output. And at the beginning, it's going to be set to nothing. 
So we just need to remember that. And now I'm just going to do another reference to our character. And we are going to, you guessed it, get the slot names. And what I'm going to do is find, find item. So what this is going to do is when this outputs our part name, it will find that in our material slot name. And then what we're going to do is create another branch condition. And this is just to save, uh, if you don't do this, it throws errors if there's nothing in the part name. We're just going to look for a not equal. If it's empty and you got to execute, it just throws up an error. So this just saves us from doing that. So from the true branch, when it's true, we're going to continue on with our event tick execution. And we're going to see another branch check. So as long as your part name is not equal to nothing, we will then move forward. So I'm just going to reference the mat list. And we just want to get, it says get a copy, kind of confusing, but anyways. So what this is doing is we're finding what we're um, referring to when we click the button. It will output the index of the material slot list that we're looking at. And then we'll use that ind index in the material list array, the material that we're looking for. So when this is true, again, we can now, we want to set the material. We can actually set the material by name. And it's not giving an option without it. So this is the one I'm referring to anyways. So this is the material that we're going to be setting. And over here is actually the material slot name that we were going to be setting. So that makes everything nice and easy and automated. So I need to call out to the widget again. I mean, I could, could get it from over there, set wires everywhere. And I just need to be, I just need to reference our U and V. So I can just hit U and scroll all the way down to get you and we're going to get the the V so these are going to be our scalar parameters in the, the material that we're setting so just compile save we set scalar parameter value and that'll be coming off our material list if you don't see that coming up um, you might just have to compile and save it just because it might not be referencing things properly so we set that and the first one is going to be you And that'll be our V. And we just want to make sure that we remember to set these correctly. I don't know how many times I either forget or set it to the Y. So we're going to set the U parameter and the parameter name is U, V, and V. And so with this, when we pass out a part name, when we're running our widget, when it's visible when we pass out the part name it will set it it'll know which one we're doing automatically and set it so next we just need to actually implement the widget and when we hit p and on p pressed we're just going to do a flip-flop and we're going to be referencing our widget quite a lot here so for the first press we are going to be setting our widget to be visible so we're just going to set 
Visibility. And visible. And we're just going to set our boolean from color picker widget is color picker vis to visible to true. And I'm just going to start the branch of not visible. Set visibility. Set visibility to hidden. And I'm just going to make sure that's set to not visible. And then I'm just also going to set the pot name from our color picker widget to nothing. So in the middle here, I'm just going to get player controller. And we're just going to look for show mouse cursor. We're going to set it, duplicate. And I want to on visible. So when we've got the widget up, we want to show the mouse cursor. And when the widget is not up, we want to take it away and set up these execution pins. So I want to go to set ignore look input. And we're also going to go ignore ignore movement input. And then again, when we are visible, we want to ignore. And then when we are the widget is invisible, we want to not ignore. And just don't forget to hook up from your get player controller. So then I'm just going to go set input game mode only. Uh, again, everything's just bare bones though. All right, and there we have it. I will compile and save. And lastly, I just need to fix up a reference in our widget. So that was just the dynamic widget that I created, which is a follow on from the normal widget. And it just has the dynamic button spawn. So we go into that, which is here. And in it, we actually reference our character because I made a new one with you guys. This doesn't work anymore. What we can do is if we cost this, we can go from a failed. We'll just replace this. And I'm just going to go from failed. Cost to toot multi mat Cinti. So if you just start writing multi, it'll come up. We got get. And this will get our mesh. They're referring to our character mesh. And then we are going to go and we're just going to get material slot names. And then I will just replace that. I guess I should really delete this. Uh, no, I said I'll do it from the fail, but I see a lot of things. Save. If I hit P, sweet. Alright, this is when I make a completely random ass character. Uh -oh, what have I broken now? Blow me down. Uncheck that. FFS. Right, and there we go. That will conclude our multi-mat series. See ya.